This is Bergstrom State Line Quiz Bowl, Junior Edition. Now from the Collins Aerospace Studio at the Nordloff Center in downtown Rockford, here's your host, Eric Wilson. Welcome to a very big day. Depending on when you are watching this game, it may be our director Aaron's birthday. All right, that's not our very big day. The reason it's a very big day is because we're crowning a brand new champion on Bergstrom State Line Quiz Bowl Junior Edition because last year's champ Marshall is out. These are the last two teams standing. Who will be our champ? Will it be the Keith Country Day Cougars? Let's have a round of applause for them. Based on Jack's enthusiasm, they are ready to go. Keith's been here before. Um, you faced Marshall in the final, so last game for you was kind of a revenge match that had to feel good. Mitch is the captain. Mitch, introduce us to your starting lineup. I'm Mitch. That's Raj, Graham, and Jack. Welcome to the Keith Country Day Cougars facing off against St. Bridget's. And we discussed that your last game was sort of a revenge match as well because last season Winnebago bounced you in the first round. You were one and done last season. Now you're playing for the championship. That has to feel pretty sweet, Crystal. Introduce us to your starting lineup. Hi, I'm Crystal. Um, on my far left is Amiel. On my left is James. And on my right is Samuel. All right, good luck to both of our teams. Hands on your buzzers. Crystal is well known for being like the, the guru of getting us all centered before a game. So everybody's going to take a deep breath. Breathe out. Hands on your buzzers. Remember the two most important rules. Wait for me to call your name before you answer and say your answer loudly and clearly. Here we go. Name the city where Jorn Utzon used concrete shells to mimic harbor sails when building an iconic opera house. Mitch. Sydney. Correct, the most populous city in Australia. And Keith earns the first points of this championship game. What congressman from Tennessee and frontiersman fought alongside William Travis? Mitch. Daniel Boone. Incorrect, I will finish for Bridget. William Travis and James Bowie at the Alamo and was Samuel. Davy Crockett. Davy Crockett, labeled by Disney as King of the Wild Frontier. Your parents can now sing that Davy Crockett song because it's planted in their head. Both teams have points now. What type of solids have atoms arranged in a highly regular lattice structure, such as salt and diamonds? Crystal. Crystals. Crystals is correct. We were all hoping that you would get that question. Name the novel by Stephen Crane in which Jim Conklin... The Red Graham. Badge of Courage. You didn't need much information about that one, and that is correct. The Red Badge of Courage, you got it. Sometimes that gamble buzzing super early pays off. What kind of event exemplified by the KT and Anthropocene ones can be caused by meteor strikes or volcanic activity? Mitch. Uh, tsunami. Incorrect. I will finish for Bridget and lead to the elimination of entire species. Samuel. Extinction. Extinction is correct. Those are the events we needed. Bridget's is on top now. What video game by Epic recently announced Samuel. Fortnite. <laughs> wow, we are battling back and forth between who, it's like name that tune, but how, how many words can you answer this question in? Nice work, Sam. What kind of writing system was created by Sequoia for the Cherokee language and by Sejong the Great for Korean? In these systems, each separate sound is represented by a letter. Graham. Alphabet? Yes, we have 26 of those letters in our English alphabet. What British politician was nicknamed Milk Snatcher for abolishing free milk in schools and was called the Iron Lady when she became Mitch? Margaret Thatcher. Yes, the first female British Prime Minister. We're tied now. What kind of number cannot be written as a fraction but can be written? Graham? Uh, irrational. Yes, as a decimal that never ends but repeats. Keys on top after three in a row. Amulets representing these insects were often placed over the hearts of mummies. Pos I'm yelling. Scarab. Yes, possibly to represent a connection to the god Ra. Back to a tie game. Name the Italian city whose historic Rialto Bridge crosses one of its many canals. Mitch. Venice. Yes, canals was a pretty good clue there. What man was played in a 2019 biography by Taron Edgerton and performed with Dua Lipa, Jack? Elton John. Yes, the 2021 20, song Cold Heart, which quotes his song, Rocket Man. 
What musical effect is the focus of John Cage's four minutes, 33 seconds? Mitch? Silence? Yes, <laughs> and can be heard when a performer rests. Keith's on a roll now. What city's Southland metropolitan area includes suburbs like Irvine and Anaheim and neighborhoods? Graham? Uh, California? Incorrect, I'll finish for Bridget. Neighborhoods like Hollywood. Samuel? Los Angeles? Yes, we needed the city, not the state. Name the fictitious force that dictates the pattern of wind rotation above and below the equator and does not actually cause Australian toilets to flush backwards. James. Cornelius effect. Incorrect. Go ahead, Mitch. The Simpson effect. Incorrect. Coriolis effect. You were close. You're in the right ballpark. Um, and we're out of time for the round. That's how we end that round. So with one, a, a rare no answer between our two teams. Boy, that moved really, really fast. In fact, that's the only question our two teams did not answer or get an answer to. So 14 questions answered, and the score split is this. Keith's on top with 80. Bridget's has 60. And we're back with one more round. We've got three to play. But our next round is volleyball, and it's after this break. This is how a championship game should be. In fact, our last couple of games have been really, really close. It's only 20 points, two questions right now between our two teams. Keith has 80, St. Bridget's has 60. Before we get our volleyball round, a very special thank you to our judge today, Brad Fisher. He's the head editor of the IHSA Scholastic Bowl State Series. Um, and we're really grateful for all the time that you spend with us, Brad. Especially a game like this, when so much is on the line, it makes us feel good that we know you're keeping an eye on things. So thanks for being here and giving us your time. All right, volleyball round, contestants, is a conferring round. Work as a team. That's always helpful. But uh, I need to hear the answers from the captains. So that's Mitch and Crystal. And our first question this week goes to Keith. Are you ready, Mitch? Here's your first volleyball. The modified Mercalli scale measures the seismic intensity of what phenomenon which are caused by the shifting of the lithosphere? Earthquake. Earthquake. Yes. Jack, I'm going to give you credit for that one. You leaned over and got that. Lithosphere is the, actually the rigid outer part of the Earth. And Keith gets the first points of the round. Let's go over to Bridget's now for your first question. Fat Man and Little Boy were the first of what weapons to be used in combat, having been fired against Japan in 1945? Atomic bomb. Yes. Those are your points. Back to Keith. Name the Austrian composer who wrote the opera Don Giovanni, the Jupiter Symphony, and the chamber piece A Little Night Music. Mozart. Yes, you got that one. Mozart is correct. Back over to St. Bridget's. The Volstead Act was Congress's method of enforcing what policy, which was briefly enacted in the U.S. by the 18th Amendment? Prohibition? Yes, prohibition is correct. Even giving the answer with a question in your voice, you had that correct. Let's go over to Keith now. The horse Rocinante and the squire Sancho Panza accompany the windmill hunting title figure of what 1605 book by Miguel de Cervantes? Don Quixote. Don Quixote, correct. We are question for question in this round between our teams. Back to St. Bridget's. Name the mathematical theorem whose namesake triples, like 3, 4, and 5, are valid side lengths for a right triangle, according to the equation a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Pythagorean theorem. Yes, it seems like the whole team knew that one relatively quickly as well. We'll give that a team effort. And we're back to Keith. The 16th century leader, Suleiman the Magnificent, was the longest reigning sultan of what empire, which collapsed during World War I? Ottoman. Ottoman is correct. Another correct answer from our teams. Back to St. Bridget's. Vaporization is the reverse effect of what phase change, commonly seen when water vapor converts into a liquid on the surface of a cold glass on a hot day? Condensation. Condensation is correct. Back to Keith. What extremely long novel follows the Rostov and Bolkonsky families during and after Napoleon's invasion of Russia and was written by Leo Tolstoy? War and Peace. War and Peace is also correct. What former Wichita State shocker and Rockford native received a vote for NBA Finals MVP in 2019 when his Toronto Raptors defeated the Golden State Warriors? Fred Van Vliet. Fred Van Vliet is correct. Fred's still a strong supporter of our community. Back over to Keith. What kind of instrument includes the Japanese taiko and the Cuban conga and are commonly used by bands to keep the beat? Drums. 
That is correct. Some of us move to the beat of a different drummer. You get that answer right. That puts you up to 140, and we're out of time for the round. That's how we end it. 30-point swing now. So you added 10 points to your score. This gap's a little bit wider, 140 to 110. But our Nika, IB, or Nika IBEW lightning round is next, and there are a lot of points on the line. You've played this game before. You know how that works. It's lightning fast. It's coming up in a little bit. Actually, we take one quick commercial break. You get to see the Bergson bonus question, and then we'll come back with that answer. Pizza and pasta on the line for our contestants. In 1959, President Dwight Eisenhower signed a proclamation making which state our nation's 50th state? Very close championship game here in the Bergstrom State Line Quiz Bowl Junior Edition. Keith's on top right now with 140. St. Bridget has 110. Scores aren't going to change after this question because there are no points on the line, but Lino's Pizza and Pasta. Thanks to our friends at Lino's of Rockford. It's a buzz in. We call it the Bergstrom bonus question. So hands on your buzzers, contestants. If you know the answer to this, you will be the team hero winning a pizza party. In 1959, President Dwight Eisenhower signed a proclamation making which state our nation's 50th state? Mitch. Hawaii. That is correct. Enjoy the pizza and pasta. Fun fact, our current 50 star state was um, actually part of a 17 year old's school project. Initially, he received a B minus for that project and then his design was selected as teacher changed his grade to an A. See how that works? All right, we'll be back with our Nika IBEW lightning round and watch these scores rack up really fast. Stay with us. Close, close game here in the championship. It makes for a fun game, makes me maybe for a little more nerve-wracking game for our contestants when the scores are this close, but it's always fun to watch. And these scores are going to change a lot in this round, for sure, because it's the Nika IBEW lightning round, and there's lots of points on the line. Each of these three categories, if you run one of them, you'll get 100 points. And because of our coin flip, St. Bridget, you get first choice. So Sam's the captain this round, and the categories are naming elements on the periodic table, literary languages, or Asian landmarks? Uh, periodic table. You got it. Naming elements on the periodic table. Give the English names of elements on the periodic table from clues about their English or Latin names. So you are naming the element. I will give you a description of that element. You'll have 60 seconds. And if you run the category, you will boost your score by 100 points. Mitch, you and the team will have 30 seconds to get to what they don't. Advice for both teams, you can pass. The clock will start when I give this first one to you. Sam, are you set? Here we go. Give the English names of elements on the periodic table from clues about their English or Latin names. Lightest element named water maker for forming water when burned. Hydrogen. Hydrogen. Correct. Element with symbol C, whose name is from the Greek Carbon. For writing. Correct. Liquid metal element named for a Roman messenger god. Mercury. Correct. Precious yellow metal whose symbol oh. AU. Say, say it again. Correct. Heavy metal with atomic number 82 named plumbum in Latin. Pass. Gas that bonds with sodium to form salt named for its yellow green color. Chlorine. Correct. Metal whose symbol SN is short for the Latin name stanum. Pass. Joseph Priestley called this breathable element deflogisticated air. Oxygen. Correct. First found in solar spectral lines, this lighter than air element is named for the sun. Helium. Correct. Element with atomic number 19, named because it was isolated from burned plants. Pass. Heavy metal with atomic number 82, named plumbum in Latin. Tungsten. Incorrect. Metal, who, and there's no time to get to the last two that you passed on. Seven of them right, 70 points added. That is a solid lightning round. Nice job. You're up to 180. So if you get these correct, um, Mitch, you'll still be 10 points short, but that'll still close that gap a little bit. 30 seconds for them. Are you ready? Here's the first one. Give the English names of elements on the periodic table from clues about their English or Latin names. Heavy metal with a top. Lead. Correct. Metal whose symbol SN is short for the Latin name stanum. Skesium. Incorrect. Element with atomic number 19, named because it was isolated from burned plants. Potassium. That's correct, and there's nothing to go back to. So you got two of those potential 30. The only one no one got. The metal with the symbol SN, short for the Latin name stanum, is tin. Oh. Used to be used a lot to make cans. So now, Mitch, you have these last two categories 
to pick from. Literary languages or Asian landmarks? Because if you're going to give us a book and tell us that, ask us to tell us the topic. So, I don't know Asian. any of Asian landmarks, so yeah. I don't think, I think, uh, literary languages. Okay, it's yours. Given some literary works, name the language they were originally written in. So I will give you the work. Okay. Remember, you give the language and not the country within the wor where the work was published, okay? We're looking for the language. So given some literary works, name the language they were originally written in. And then, Sam, same rules apply for you. If you're paying attention, you'll have 30 seconds to go through whatever they don't. If they clean the category, that's 100 points. Mitch, are you ready? Given some literary works, name the language they were originally written in. Because I Could Not Stop for Death by American poet Emily Dickinson. English? Correct. The Old Gringo by Mexican author Carlos Fuentes. Spanish? Correct. Les Miserables and the Hunchback of Notre Dame by French. Victor Hugo. Correct. The Decameron by Giovanni Boccaccio, which is set near Florence. Italian? Correct. Hansel and Gretel, a fairy tale collected by Jacob and Wilhelm Grimm. German. Correct. The Wind-Up Bird Chronicle by Haruki Marukami. Japanese? Correct. Journey to the West, which describes the monkey king, Sun Wukong. Pass. The Aeneid, a mythical chronicle by Virgil. Uh, Latin? Correct. The Cairo Trilogy by Egyptian author Nagib Mahfouz. Uh, Hieroglyph Hieroglyphics? Incorrect. The Alchemist by Brazilian author Paulo Coelho. Spanish? No, it's Portuguese. Incorrect. Journey to the West, which describes the Monkey King, and no time to get back to that. You also ran through that and got 70 points for the first run. 230 is your total now, so there is 30 points left, and it'll still put you 20 points shy, but it'll close the gap again, Sam. Uh, 30 seconds to get through all of these. Remember, given these literary works, name the language they were originally written in. Ready? Journey to the West, which describes the Chinese. Monkey King. Say that? Chinese. Correct. The Cairo Trilogy by Egyptian Pass. author... Say that again. Pass. The Alchemist by Brazilian author Paulo Coelho. Portuguese. That is correct. The Cairo Trilogy by Egyptian author Nagib Mahfouz. Egyptian? Incorrect. Um, there's still time on the clock, but you already answered that question. The Cairo Trilogy was written in Arabic. Oh. Arabic. So we have a 30-point game going into this final challenge. Really close. That's where we like to see these championship games because it shows how evenly matched our teams are. It's also very exciting for us to watch. Maybe a little more nerve-wracking for you up here answering the questions. We'll have that final challenge right after this break. We are about to enter the final, final challenge of this season for Bergstrom State Line Quiz Bowl Junior Edition. And we will be crowning a brand new champ no matter who wins. Uh, this is going to be exciting. In fact, last round, in fact, almost all game, our teams have matched each other point for point. The swing right now is only 30 points. Keith Country Day has 230. St. Bridget has 200. And our Mercy Health final challenge, each question is worth 20 points. We'll read through these as fast as I can, get as many questions in as the time, allot the time we have allotted. Hands on your buzzers. When we're this close, especially, again, it's a championship game, wait for me to call your name to say your answer and say that answer loudly and clearly. We're going to do one more crystal deep breath. Exhale. Good luck to our teams. Here we go. What group traveled with James Reed on the Oregon Trail and resorted to cannibal... Mitch. Donner Party. Correct. Resorted to cannibalism. You didn't even need the grossest clue there. And Keith is the f has the first points of this round. The Cook Snowflake and the Mandelbrot set are examples of what type of geometric image whose name indicates that they exist between one and two dimensions, Samuel. One. Incorrect. I'll finish for Keith. And that exhibit self-similarity when zoomed in very deeply. Graham. Fractal. Fractal is right. Elsa saying about the frozen fractals all around. Just let it go. Just let it go. Mm -hmm. Keith, you get those points. What epic poem includes a catalog of ships in its description of the Trojan War and is usually attributed to Homer? Gabe. Iliad? Iliad is correct. Bridges first points of the round. What American National Park contains Devil's Hole, the racetrack Playa, and Furnace Creek, the site of the hottest... James. Devil's Tower. 
Incorrect. I'll finish for Keith. Hottest surface temperature ever recorded on Earth. Mitch. Death Valley. Death Valley is right. 134 degrees was that hottest temperature. What hormone is produced by namesake glands above the kidneys and is associated with high heart rate? Gabe. Sweat. Incorrect. I'll finish for Keith. And the fight or flight response? Mitch. Adrenaline. Adrenaline is right. Those are the adrenal glands. Name the winning commander of the battles of the Granicus River, Issus, and Guagamela, a son of Philip II and Macedonian general who is known, Mitch? Alexander the Great. Yes, as known as the Great. You didn't even need that part of the clue. Three in a row for Keith. What video game character works with his brother Mugman to collect Samuel? Cuphead. That's right. Soul contracts for the devil and his right-hand man, King Dice. Bridges points. Name the home nation of the poets of I Wandered Lonely as a Cloud and the Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner, Samuel Taylor Coleridge and William Wordsworth. Mitch. UK. That is correct. Name the ancient Greek scientist who supposedly defended Syracuse with a death ray. Samuel. Archimedes. Yes, and legendarily yelled Eureka when he used the buoyant force to find the density of a crown. Name the springtime Jewish holiday celebrated with the Seder and by eating unleavened bread. Crystal. Hanukkah. Incorrect. I'll finish for Keith. To commemorate the exodus from Egypt. Jack. Passover? Passover is right. You get those points. What country is home to Fingal's Cave, a basalt column formation in the Hebrides archipelago and is governed from Edinburgh? Crystal. Scotland. Scotland is right. What string instrument featured in The Swan by Camille Saint-Saëns was played by Jacqueline Dupre and Yo-Yo Ma? Crystal. The violin? Incorrect. Keith. Go ahead, Graham. Cello. Cello is right. And that is the last question of the game, of the round, of the season. Congratulations, Keith Country Day. <laughs> Fitting you put up one of the highest point totals of the season. Again, 390, just shy of 400. Congratulations, your champs in the second season of Burst from Stateline Quiz Bowl Junior Edition. It was exciting to watch you play. You made it very exciting. But so did you, St. Bridget's. It was so fun. Um, we've, we've said this before. Um, this is the hardest part of the game, right? Because we have to say goodbye. Technically, uh, we have to say goodbye to both teams. Thank you both for such a great season. Um, winning would, I can see it in your faces. Winning would feel better. But you have to feel good knowing that you made it this far. And you made it such a great season for us. How many of you all on the stage are eighth graders? So that means I expect to see in some way, shape, or form you three maybe playing for Boylan. And Keith, you'll play for the high school team as well. And then Sam, you'll be the anchor next season in the junior edition for St. Bridges. Is that a deal? Yeah. I think Crystal's egging you on a little bit. So I, I look forward to seeing it. It's really, it's been fun to watch you play. And I look forward to seeing you play four more years in our high school tournament. Um, and thank you for spending so much time with us. We really know your time is valuable and we hope you enjoyed the game. Hope you enjoyed this season. Hope you had half as much fun as we did in this season. Um, it is hard to believe that our high school season starts in a few weeks because we're mid-August right now. Unbelievable. So we will see you soon and thanks for joining us.